Canada is experiencing summer weather like it has never seen before. Unprecedented heat and record-breaking temperatures. Looking for a place that promises an out-of-world experience? Then we should be talking about Canada, its beautiful scenery, awesome climate, and unforgettable experiences it offers. But recently, scientists have found a looming danger over the breathtaking land. They have unearthed something under its icy tundras that would forever change the world. How will this event impact the rest of the world? Is it time to scout for safety? Let's get to it. When you are told that you are about to step into the second largest country in the wild world, you might have some expectations. But even with all those expectations, Canada will blow your mind. The nation is indeed bigger than every other country apart from Russia in surface area. It is also true that its vast landscape stretches across the earth, being about 4,600 kilometers from north to south and 5,500 kilometers from east to west. However, much of this vast land is uninhabitable. Part of the reason for this is that although Canada has a very diverse climate, much of the country is in the far north, where the winters are long and cold. It is also in its regions that we find the Arctic, the most uninhabitable part of the country. It is covered in snow and ice for most of the year, and the temperatures are very cold. The Arctic is also home to permafrost, which makes it difficult to build roads and other infrastructure. This permafrost refers to a layer of soil that is permanently frozen. It is found in about half of Canada and can be up to several kilometers thick in some places. Permafrost makes it difficult to build roads and other infrastructure and can also thaw and cause landslides and other hazards. The permafrost is maintained thanks to the region's temperature, which falls to minus 30 degrees Celsius or minus 22 degrees Fahrenheit in January. Another reason why Canada seems to be largely uninhabited is that much of it is covered in mountains, forests, and lakes. This makes it difficult to access and develop many areas of the country, which in the end, are left natural. Here, we find features like the Canadian Shield, a large region of rocky terrain covering most of central and eastern Canada. Despite this region's poor soil, the Shield is home to many lakes and rivers as well. There are also the Rocky Mountains, which refers to a mountain range that runs along the western border of Canada. The Rocky Mountains are very high and steep, covered in snow and ice for much of the year. The Rocky Mountains are also home to many glaciers and avalanches, which are quite tough to travel through. But even though a large part of Canada is not habited, it doesn't mean the land is devoid of people. People have lived in Canada for thousands of years now, we must say that human society here has thrived immensely, even though we find about 90% of Canadians live in a relatively small area along the southern border of the country because the region has a milder climate and more arable land than the rest of the country. It is also important to note that some people live in all of these uninhabitable regions of Canada. However, the population density is very low, as people must rely on specialized infrastructure and skills to survive these harsh conditions. But wait a minute there. You must understand that the inhabitable parts of Canada cannot be separated from how beautiful Canada is. This is because the uninhabitable regions of Canada, while being an issue in some ways, are also a major part of why you wouldn't want to leave the country once you step foot on it. Indeed, the land's uninhabitable features contribute immensely to the nation's beauty. Here, you will be awestruck by the Arctic's vastness, the Canadian Shield's ruggedness, and the majesty of the Rocky Mountains, all awe-inspiring sights. Because of all these regions, the country is widely known for its natural beauty. Its natural beauty is also enhanced by its abundance of wildlife, including polar bears, moose, wolves, and elk. Canada's uninhabitable features also serve as a reminder of the power of nature. These landscapes have been shaped by forces such as glaciers, volcanoes, and earthquakes over millions of years. When you explore these regions, you will find things you only thought possible in magical realms. The Northern Lights, or Aurora Borealis, are a natural light display seen in the Arctic sky. They are caused by the interaction of charged particles from the sun with the Earth's atmosphere. The Northern Lights are a dazzling and awe-inspiring sight, one of Canada's most popular tourist attractions. 
The icebergs of the Arctic are another natural wonder. These massive pieces of ice break off from glaciers and float in the ocean. Icebergs can be of various shapes and sizes and are often breathtakingly beautiful. We must also not forget to mention how beautiful the mountains of the Canadian Rockies are. The Rockies are home to towering peaks, glaciers, and waterfalls, also standing as a popular destination for hiking, camping, and skiing. Indeed, all of these are a testament to the resilience of the natural world and the importance of protecting it. Of course, beauty is subjective, and not everyone will appreciate these regions in Canada. However, they are a unique and important part of the country's natural beauty, also contributing to the unique climate which the country is largely known for. However, it is at this point that the bad news comes in. Scientists have predicted a major disruption in Canada's climate that will change everything we once knew about Canada and affect the rest of the world. But what is the climate in Canada like? And what kind of world wrecking are scientists warning about? Suppose you ask someone who has been there, especially in winter. In that case, they will probably describe Canada as a place of extreme bone-chilling cold. In winter here, the temperature in many cities is reduced to about minus 20 degrees Celsius. This goes further to be complemented by icy winds and high snowfall that will leave you shivering. But this is not all Canadian weather. On the grand scale of things, the nation's chilling cold of winter is usually replaced by a beautiful spring with blooming flowers. This is followed by autumn, which later gets replaced by a really warm summer. Hence, we can say that it is not always cold here. You will find different weather conditions in the nation based on the location. For example, in northern Canada, it is a new experience for visitors who find it a place of the sun during summertime when the sunset is really slow thus giving it 24 hours of premium lighting. But then, things drastically turn in fall when even days revel in twilight. There are also pretty warm moments in this region when thunders turn green, showcasing unique beauty. But all this beauty might soon be lost as the climate changes. Indeed, nothing is new about the phenomenon of climate change. However, this event in Canada seems to be making the headlines in Canada due to the strange rate at which it is happening. According to scientists, Canada is experiencing a new tapestry of temperature that has never been seen before, as it is surprisingly warming at twice the global rate. We must also clarify that this largely affects the country's natural ecosystem and the human lives that thrive within it. A major impact of the strange and fast warming of Canada's temperatures is the melting of the Arctic ice. In all of this, Summer seems to be highly dreaded as a large chunk of the old Arctic ice is said to always break away every summer, causing the icy expanse of the region to greatly deplete. In case you are wondering, this is no good news, as it is wired with many consequences that no one wants. But what are they? On a global scale, global sea levels are rising even more as the Arctic ice continues to melt. This has seriously placed coastal communities at risk of all sorts of water disasters as they gradually lose the mode of life they are used to living in this region. But that is not all. The rising temperature of the region also seems to greatly alter the country's water circulation system, which can result in either intense drought or flood. This phenomenon has, therefore, thrusted Canada into an urgent search for ways to preserve its fresh water majorly stored in its Great Lakes. Interestingly, these lakes are not just water reserves but are relevant to the nation's economy, power, agriculture, and overall human survival. But the melting Arctic ice is not Canada's only problem in its attempt to protect its freshwater system. Sadly, this is a time wherein the general health of Canada's freshwater in quantity and quantity is being threatened. Regarding the quality and quantity of freshwater systems in Canada, the authorities have been dealing with pollution and over-extraction amidst climate change. Another issue here is how the fishing activities of the nation's citizens have resulted in bringing overfishing boards as part of the issues confronting Canada. With the reduction and continual depletion of the fish population in the region, which has also upset the balance of the marine ecosystem, it has become clear that not only are the fish resources of the nation not as inexhaustible as many had initially thought, but that the nation's nearest future generation may have to do without fishes if nothing quick is done. 
It has become a great concern that the activities of humans in Canada have greatly helped to endanger species of wildlife indigenous to its aquatic region. Hence, Canada is now undertaking conservative measures to rectify the situation. Some of its efforts include creating national parks and marine protected areas, or MPAs, equipped with survival resources to help endangered fish species and animals recover their population. You must note that exhausting the region's fish population does not only mean that there will be a lack of tasty fish in the region, but also represents a major disruption of the aquatic ecosystem. Knowing this, Canada has resolved to expand its protection of its oceans by 25% in 2025. It is also trying to preserve their fishes through sustainable fisheries management science. Here, the goal is to ensure that the fish population remains intact even while the current fish need of the nation is met. Interesting, right? But what about the giant of climate change in the room? What is being done to resolve it? Now, you would be wrong to think that the government and people of Canada are merely sitting down, arms crossed, while they watch all sorts of things happen to their only home. On the contrary, Canada is doing its very best to address the issue of climate change across its borders and beyond. Some of their consistent effort is geared towards green infrastructural development and the adoption of renewable energy, which promises to help the situation greatly. At the same time, scientists remain at work, constantly studying patterns while projecting future changes to help people prepare for what may be coming. Legally, Canada also seems to be adjusting by incorporating laws and policies that can help alleviate the problem. A good example of this is the Canadian Environmental Protection Act. From this, it is clear that the federal and provincial governments are working seriously, doing their best to protect the region. Here, the federal government is laden with policies that present solutions, while the provincial government enforces and expands on them. This is to ensure effectiveness and efficiency in all. But things do not stop within the borders of Canada, as the nation also participates in international environmental agreements that bear in mind the good of all. Examples of this kind of agreement are the Kyoto Protocol and the Paris Agreement. All this is complemented by the fact that Canada actually follows global standards of protecting the ecosystem, thus making it a good example for all. In Canada, environmental activism is also normal, with NGOs playing a key role in this. But it gets even more interesting as indigenous communities also strongly involve themselves in efforts to save Canada in these seemingly catastrophic periods. Here, noteworthy is the nation's intense indigenous stewardship practices, where indigenous communities apply their age-long understanding of the ecosystem to protect it. This is due to long coexistence and interactions with it. This in-depth knowledge of the indigenous community of the ecosystem is referred to as tech, which means traditional ecological knowledge. It is believed that the results will be astonishing when tech is combined with modern preservation means. To the indigenous communities, land is not just an asset to exploit, but is also a relationship. While some modern companies think otherwise, according to the indigenous communities, Indigenous community members are not afraid to speak against their damaging activities like pipeline digging, which threaten the land and environment. Canada has a green economy to further preserve the nation's economy and environment. This is an initiative that aims to integrate economic growth with environmental sustainability. Here, the goal is to find the balance between prioritizing sustaining the environment while pushing at the same time toward economic growth. This is a highly difficult task as finding the balance in an industrialized setting is difficult, hence the need for environmental studies. So many researchers are, however, glad to take on the task as they continually sort out ways to ensure the maximization of the nation's resources to grow its economy while at the same time protecting the ecosystem. So far, citizens have expressed their discontent with the government's attitude to environmental choices, from conservation strategy to management of resources. We will not deny that Canada is a blessed land with multiple natural resources and one of the world's largest exporters of timber, minerals, and oil. But with this blessing comes a huge responsibility for proper management. But what does Canada and the world stand to lose if solutions are not found? If solutions to the environmental problems of Canada are not resolved, the world will lose a lot. 
the ice will continue to melt and global sea levels will continue to rise. Even if you are not a Canadian, the disaster will eventually be brought to your doorstep. But what's more, the world would be losing one of its most beautiful landscapes. Why don't we peek at some of the beautiful areas in Canada, which may never be the same again if the worst is allowed to happen? Here, merely exploring the west coast of Canada says it all. The west coast of Canada is a stunning and diverse region known for its natural beauty and outdoor recreational opportunities. It includes the provinces of British Columbia and Yukon. British Columbia, or BC, is the primary province on the west coast and is famous for its breathtaking landscapes. It features the rugged Rocky Mountains, dense rainforests on the west coast, and a vast network of fjords and inlets. BC is also known for its outdoor activities, including skiing, hiking, and water sports. Vancouver is a major cultural and economic hub in the province. Vancouver is the largest city in British Columbia. It is often considered one of the most livable cities in the world. It boasts a diverse population, a mild coastal climate, and a vibrant arts and culinary scene. Located just off the coast of BC, Vancouver Island is known for its charming towns, beautiful beaches, and lush forests. Victoria, the provincial capital, is situated on the island's southern tip. There is also Whistler, a world-famous ski resort town located in the coast mountains and is a popular destination for winter sports enthusiasts. Here, we can also consider the Inside Passage. This scenic marine route stretches from the northern tip of Vancouver Island to the southern border of Alaska. It's renowned for its stunning fjords, wildlife, and whale-watching and kayaking opportunities. Furthermore, the discussion cannot be over without mentioning Yukon. While not on the Pacific coast, the Yukon is often associated with the West Coast due to its proximity and similar landscapes. It's known for its vast wilderness, including the Klondike region, famous for the Klondike gold rush of the late 19th century. At the same time, its region is blessed with remarkable natural wonders, including Pacific Ocean shorelines, mountain ranges, and lush rainforests. It's a haven for outdoor enthusiasts, offering activities like hiking, camping, kayaking, and wildlife viewing. Because the west coast of Canada is a paradise for nature lovers and those seeking a diverse cultural experience, we must understand that this is just a fraction of the beautiful country that may be ruined without quick solutions to preserve its environment. We've come to the end of today's video. Thanks for watching till the end. What do you think about the event in Canada? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section below.